Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7B Torque practice problem. As usual, if you find our content helpful, please make sure to subscribe and leave a like. It really helps our channel a lot. So let's just go ahead and read the problem statement. Feel free to pause the video in order to copy the problem so that you can follow along. So a trebuchet is an ancient drawing device that consists of a wooden beam with a certain mass that can rotate freely about the pivot point shown. The beam has a very heavy object hanging from one end and something that we want to throw, like a physics t uh, shirt that is very upsetting to me on top of the other end. Initially, there is another weight hung from a cord on the left side of the pivot point to keep the, um, this device motionless. So the first thing that we have to do is uh, we have a sketch of a wooden beam, which is just a rectangle. Uh, we have to draw the forces on the beam due to the two hanging masses. And then we have to decide how big the other forces must be and draw those force vectors on the beam also. All right, so as you can see, I have everything uh, written down here. So I have the uh, picture on the uh, of the device and I have all of the masses. Um, so let's just go ahead and figure this out. The first thing that we have to do is a complete force diagram, uh, meaning we need to put all of the forces that are acting on this wooden beam. So let's just go ahead and do that. So the first thing, or, or you know, students usually gravitate to figuring this out first, is that uh, this wooden beam has a mass. So because it has a mass, it does have some force by gravity acting on it. And because we can assume that this wooden beam uh, has a you know, continuous density, we're just going to go ahead and put this at the very center of our drawing. Now, um, let's just go ahead and figure the number out. So force by gravity. We do know that force is due to gravity is just mass times gravity. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply this number times 10. I like using G is equal to 10. So let's just go ahead and do that. And that is going to be 35,000 newtons. Okay, so moving on. The next force that we have acting on this problem is, uh, you know, let's just go ahead and use this one, the 7,000 kilogram object. Um, so let me just go ahead and put an arrow over here. It has to be a little bit greater than this one because it is uh, twice the mass. So let's just go ahead and maybe do this, you know, twice as big. So force by, um, how do we call it? Let's just call it the left mass, I guess. And this number is just gonna be uh, 7,000 kilograms times 10 due to gravity. That is gonna be 70,000. Yes, 70,000 newtons. Next thing we have going on is there's a uh, physics professor over here. Now we don't really have the weight of the physics professor, but uh, you know, just in terms of scale, a person is usually you know, maybe 60 kilograms to 100 kilograms, 70 kilograms is good enough. Uh, it doesn't really matter because I don't need to give it a number. What I'm trying to say is that 70 to 100 kilograms compared to this mass right here, which is the smallest of the masses that I have right here, you should just have a very small arrow right here. Because even if it's 60 kilograms, 800 kilograms, it's still going to be a super, super tiny arrow in comparison to this too. So I don't have a number, but I'm just trying to scale things here. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, now we have a gigantic mass over here. So this mass should be bigger than the other ones. So let's just make it big. And this mass, uh, I'm just going to call it force by right mass. So it's just this number multiplied times gravity, which is 10. So this is 350,000. Okay, so at this point, I have all of my quote unquote obvious forces. However, I am missing one force because when you think about it, this device is not moving and it is not rotating. So the fact that the device is not moving 
This means that your net force on the wooden beam is equal to zero. And the fact that this device is not rotating around the pivot point means that your net torque is equal to zero. So let's just go ahead and um, just think about this for a second. So you have four forces and all of them are going down. Is this gonna cancel out? Is this gonna add up to zero just by themselves? No, four forces going down are just not going to add up to zero. You need at least one force going up, right? So, yes. So we're missing one force, and that would be the force at the pivot point. It has to add up to all of these four forces. So in terms of, you know, a relative magnitude, we need it to be uh, kind of big. We need a big force over here. And now I can just tell that my uh, extended force diagram is complete because I just by looking at it, my ups are equal to my downs. So it does balance out. So the net force is equal to zero. So this is gonna be a complete extended force diagram. Now, typically an extended force diagram in order to have a full answer, you need forces and you need distances. However, in this particular quiz, uh, not a single distance was given. So this will be a, you know, a complete answer given the information that the problem was, you know, extending to the students. You can't possibly figure out distances when not a single distance was given to you. All right, so now let's just go ahead and solve uh, part B. So this is answer A. So answer B is referring to your picture in part A, which is just this thing, briefly explain how the 7,000 kilograms hanging mass is able to keep the beam from rotating even though the 35,000 mass hanging from the other end is five times heavier. Okay, so we basically need to, obviously the professor is such a tiny weight um, that basically the only th things balancing out this beam are these two masses. Now, yes, the professor is here, so he does contribute, but when you think about it, not really. So let's just go ahead and figure this out. How is it possible that these two masses, which are tiny in comparison to this one, are balancing out the this device, the trebuchet? Well, I think that the picture kind of tells you the answer. Uh, the, the construction of this device is done such that, that this distance is way smaller than this distance over here. Um, and that is because of the fact that uh, torque is equal to RF sine of the angle. Now, in this case, we don't have to worry about the angle because all of the forces are perpendicular to each other. So that is not gonna be a concern. So um, basically one of the forces can be bigger, but if the, if the moment arm is smaller, then you can balance out the torques. That is basically it. So torque is equal to moment arm times force. This force is obviously way bigger than this force. However, this moment arm is obviously greater than this moment arm. So that is what makes it possible to balance out the torques. So I guess final answer for B is uh, briefly explain how the hanging mass because R to the uh, left mass is greater than R to the right mass. So even if force left mass is smaller than force to the right mass, torques still balance out. So remember, a torque is a balancing act. We're not just looking at the forces. We also have this R involved. So that was basically it. So part C, when it is time to throw the teacher, you must cut the cord holding uh, the 7,000 kilogram mass. What is the direction of the angular momentum vector of the beam? Okay, so basically you cut this cord, this mass disappears, everything here changes, and the professor just basically just goes away like this, right? Um, so let's just go ahead and see what happens in terms of physics. So in terms of physics, what you're doing is you're cutting this. So this does not exist anymore. So now basically, uh, 
you used to have your torques balanced so now for part C your torques are not balanced anymore but we just have to figure out the direction of that imbalance so uh, it, it, they used to be balanced because you had two torques going out of the page so you used to have this was going out of the page this was going out of the page just by using your right hand rule this was going into the page by using your um, oh these two these three to oh i'm sorry so you have three torques going out of the page this one this one and this one and you have one torque going um into the page so this one when you cut this one out of the equation you have a two versus one situation but you know that these torques are going to be unbalanced right because you needed this in order for them to be balanced so now they're going to be unbalanced and now that this one is the greater torque your torques are going to be unbalanced in the direction of um, of this torque or, or the torque that this uh, force is exerting. So the torques are going to be unbalanced going into the um, into the the page. So the torque net the direction is into the page. But now the question is asking us what is the uh, direction of the angular momentum vector, not the uh, net torque vector so let's just go ahead and review our equations so this is an equation that we know delta l is equal to net torque delta t and delta l of course being final minus initial in this case initial is equal to zero because nothing was moving and then suddenly this breaks and something happens so for this particular problem, we had LF is equal to net torque times delta T. Delta T is not a vector, so, so delta T is not really going to put any direction on LF. The direction of LF is going to be equal to the direction of the net torque. So because our net torque is unbalanced into the page, our angular momentum vector is going to be unbalanced into the page just by looking at the equation. So your LF into the page. And there we go. So this is the final answer and this basically solves the entire quiz. I hope that you found this video helpful. Again, if you're finding this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Um, it helps this channel. See you guys on the next video.